As Albert Einstein once said, the only source of knowledge is experience. No better words describe my motivation to building my very own CNC machine. This has been a challenging but rewarding project. In this video, I run into some setbacks in building the next part of the machine, but what better way to learn, right? Let me show you what I'm working on. Oh, and stick around to watch a whole new cinematic intro leading up to the actual creation of this part. It's pretty cool in my opinion. I think you'll like it. In order to mount the Z-axis linear slide, which will hold the, the spindle, the part that does the cutting and milling on the CNC machine, we need to build a mounting plate that will join it to the gantry. Now there are actually two plates that we need to build, one that mounts to the linear slide and the other to the gantry. Now there's a lot of holes that need to be drilled into the plate that we're going to be working on today. 14 of them in fact are going to include a pocket so the M8 socket head will be flush with the plate surface once installed. Now this is an important feature of this plate because they do need to mate together uh, and they shouldn't interfere with one another. So stay tuned for our next video where we will focus on the creation of the other plate in the final assembly. But for now, let's take a look at the creation of this plate. Almost immediately, I encountered my first issue. I set my plunge depth too deep and the feed rate too high. This resulted in aluminum getting stuck in the flutes of the end mill. Let's try this again, but with some changes to the program. We're starting to mill out the first pocket for the M8 socket head bolt. There are 14 of these that need to be made. Unfortunately, I discovered the USB port on my laptop had some issues when the cable was wiggled, causing the CNC to lose communications. Well, back to the drawing board. I'll need to re-zero the machine, but the only problem is I forgot to keep a hole dedicated for this purpose. I attempted to do my best to find the zero mark from the edge of the piece of metal, but it wasn't perfect. So it looks like I'll have to do it the hard way and drill my starter holes first. Now, if something like this happens again, at least I'll have something to zero the machine on. It was definitely a lesson learned. You're probably wondering, what am I doing here? Why am I using multiple passes to barely drill a hole? Well, that's a great question. The program I'm using was not designed to drill deep holes. So rather than rewrite the program, I simply just reran it several times, lowering the Z height a little each time. I still had to modify my original program to do the actual drilling operation. So for now, I just needed the hole to be a little bit deeper. And if I did run into a problem where I needed to find the X, Y, zero in the future, I could do that with any one of these holes. To ensure that all the holes were in sync, if you notice, I now have to redrill the first two holes just to make sure that they're, they're lined up properly. Well, my router died. So I relied on a backup. Thankfully, I had one. Well, that's a good thing I had those holes drilled. Now I can find the zero mark again. And before I continued, I took this opportunity to just check the size of those holes, make sure that the depth was okay. Thankfully, it wasn't that big of a deal. Just replace the router and then modify the program a little bit so I can continue where I left off. I deviated from my original plan quite a bit here. 
I wanted to see how a drill bit would perform, so I quickly wrote a program that would take a quarter inch drill bit and drill down about eight millimeters. If this worked, I would attempt to drill down further. The drill bit worked really well, so I set up the end mill to mill an 8.2 millimeter diameter hole as deep as I could safely plunge, about 14 millimeters down. Now this was gonna be for all remaining holes, except for one, I would leave one left, just in case I needed to find that X, Y, zero again. With the holes taken care of, it was now time to do the pocket holes. It's kind of neat to see the aluminum look like it's being dissolved due to the time lapse. In actuality, this operation took about 20 minutes per pocket. The entire operation took many hours. So as I make these videos, I try really hard to improve the quality of the video. I hope this one at least showed some level of improvement. If you liked what you see, please do leave a like, leave a comment, let me know what you're interested in seeing next and what you'd like to see changed. Thanks. Despite all the setbacks, success wasn't far behind. And you know what? This was a good experience. I learned a few things about what not to do about the feed and plunge rate. I'm reminded for the next time, establish a hole somewhere in the part to find X, Y, zero. And finally, always have a backup plan when the tool you have fails. In the end, I'm happy with the results and look forward to the second part of this video where I build the plate that will attach to the gantry and of course, actually showing the assembly. So stay tuned. And if you've stuck around this far, Thank you so very much for watching.